Before we start, just tie on from what my husband was talking about, about the waiting place. <clears throat> I'm sure everyone has heard of Dr. Seuss. Yes. And he wrote a book called The Places You Will Go. Has anyone read this book? No. Yes. Seriously? <laughs> okay, my husband should have because our children have read them. And this is how it reads, and I think sometimes God, God can send messages to children about stuff they don't really know yet, but I think about the waiting place, yeah. there's truth in this book, and so I'm going to read it to you, I've just got the narrative, not the full book. It says, congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off on your way. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know, and you are the guy who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care, about some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head for the brains and your shoes for the feet, you're too smart to go down any not-so-good street. And you may not find any you want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's open in there, in the wide open air. Out there, things are happening, and frequently do, to people as brainy and as fitzy as you. And then things start to happen, don't worry, don't shoot. Just go right along and you'll start happening too. Over the places you'll go, you'll be on your way up, you'll be seeing the sights. <coughs> you'll be joining the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you'll top all the rest. Except when you don't. <laughs> because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch, and your gang will fly on, you'll be left in the lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then you'll be in a swamp. <laughs> And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun, and slumping yourself is not easily done. You'll come to a place where the streets are not marked, some windows are lighted, but mostly they're marked. A place you could sprain with your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right in three quarters, or maybe not quite? Or go around mm. back, or sneak in from behind. Simple, it's not, I'm afraid you will find. For my maker uppers to make up their minds. You can get so confused that you're starting to race down long wiggle roads with a breakneck in pace. And grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, for the most useless place, the waiting place. For people just waiting, and this is the place where we don't want to stay. Waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or mail to come, or the train to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or the, or waiting for a yes or a no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting, waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or perhaps waiting for their uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a bed to break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants or a wig of curls, or another chance, everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and slaying, you'll find the correct places where the boom bands are playing. With a banner flip flapping once more, you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, really because you're that kind of guy. Oh, the places you'll go, they'll be fun to be done, there are points to be scored, there are games to be won, and the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. <laughs> You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you on the TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. <laughs> I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too, games you can't win because you play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone is something you will be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance to meet things that scare you right out of your pants. And some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go where the weather be foul, and on you will go where your enemies crowd. On you will go though the hack and cracks howl, onward up many a frightening creek, though your own arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. 
<laughs> on and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know, you'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. Be sure that <laughs> when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life is a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your left foot with your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. Ninety-eight and three quarters percent guaranteed. <laughs> yes, you'll move mountains. So be your name Buxton or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Ali von Alan O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. And I just I love that because do you know what? it's it's true. It, you are going to have places where you have to wait. It's deciding is the waiting for, are you waiting for God or are you just waiting because you're scared? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yes. what was his name? Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. It's a children's book and it's a book that had I been prepared before my children were born, I probably would have had one for each of them and got people to write in it for them as they went through school. Mm -hmm. um, because I think it's a book that's honest. Yeah, this is it's cool. honest, you know, it, it, it describes what our lives are going to be and um, for me I kind of think that God just, you'll know I work with children and I think that it's, it's a privilege in that I don't think you can learn from a much better audience, from a much better group. There's no, you know, even in my peer groups, I don't learn as much as I do when I'm with children. And so, Whenever, you know, my husband told me I was sharing this morning, and he's like, it is about... I didn't just tell her this morning. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> told me on a Sunday, so... Um, and it was about transformation. <laughs> I was like, okay, go on, let me not panic. I'm just going to breathe here, because I did feel a little bit like, oh gosh. And um, he said, well... Let's just look at it together. And so, whenever I've been driving and thinking about it, he was like, well, do it in the way that makes sense to you. And so, we wrote down the word transformation and I cut it off at the end because Asian is just a bit long. Um, and we started, and he said, so to transform, what do you need first? And um, my answer to the Lord was that I need trust. Because to, to transform anything, I need to trust. I mean, we all have deep dark secrets. My deepest darkest secrets only two people on the earth know, and God himself knows. Um, but that's because those people I really trust. Do you know? To transform, it really isn't about the outside. That's not easy to transform. Um, we can go to Pedro so we can get the eyebrows pulled out, we can, you know, <laughs> we can have many piercings, we can have liver suction, we can have everything for the outside. You can transform the outside by your own power. What you can't do by your own power is transform the inside and it starts to trust. Um, in John 10, uh, Jesus, there's the story about the shepherd and the sheep hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And so to even start being transformed, you need to have a voice telling you, okay, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. This is what we need to look at. Sometimes, it, you know, whenever God said to me, okay, Fancy, you really have a problem with when someone does something wrong to you, you're able to just shut off your feelings, don't like them anymore, and it's all over. They may as well be dead in the ground. <laughs> because that is the truth. That is how it was. <laughs> And it was a very, I just was able to do it like that, as it was like, in my mind, I could cut it off and it was gone. And it's a self-protective thing. I grew up in a boarding school, I changed school so many times, there was something I needed to do then. I don't need to do that now, and it's not how God intended. So when he said, let's do that, I was like, well, let's put that back. Um, I, don't, I don't really agree that is the thing that we need to deal with. But he said, no, let's do that. He's like, I am your shepherd, you're listening to my voice, um, you can trust me, I am not going to hurt you. But sometimes transformation is not 
pain free. It's certainly not tear free. Um, in, Psalm, in Psalm 9, verse 10, and I really like this, I've had to use pencils to find all my marks. It says that those who know your, know your name trust in you, for you, O Lord, have never abandoned anyone who searches for you, abandoned anyone who searches for you. And the, the Passion Translation says, May everyone who knows your mercy keep putting their trust in you, for you can, for they can count on you for help no matter what. O oh Lord, you will never, no, never neglect those who come to you. So it is really about our trust. Are we trusting God and going to Him? Because He says that we can. He says that we can come to Him and we can trust Him. So before you even start the process, you need to have a safe place. And that is really a lot about um, attachment. And as we know now, in, as, as I become more educated in the early years, is that attachment where that trust is formed with a specific person and with a specific is essential. And if that does not happen in the early years in a healthy way, that affects a whole life, really, your whole entire life. And so if we don't form that trustful attachment relationship with our Father God, how are we going to transform? How are we going to get out of the waiting place? How are we going to do that? Because we're not in a trusting place. Because sometimes you are going to have to get out there and it's going to be dark. Some windows are light, some are dark. Some, you know, it, and do you know what we have? We, at that point, it's that God, I trust you and you direct my path. I put all of my trust in you and I know that you're directing my path. So if we're walking through the start saying, that's okay, we're holding my hand, we're doing it together. And that's that knowing, that attachment, that secure bond, that secure place. If we don't have that, how are we gonna how are you gonna change the inside? It's not easy. There's no one outside here who's gonna do it for you. There's no one outside here who knows what's in in there. Um, so the next thing I thought was, okay, well so that's fine, but then what if it's not me? That's the problem. What if it's someone else? Could be. Um, and he said, okay, so there's things that I don't like. And I was like, okay, so what are they? And in Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, it says there are six things the Lord hates. No, no, seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who calls up lies, and a person who sows discord among brothers. So why are you doing any of those things? <laughs> Mostly. I didn't. And it's like, but what about people who did it to you? And I was like, so that's not the problem. And he's like, but it is because it's about have we been aware of the fact I see how you behave? Because God says he's watching. He says in Proverbs 15, 3, that he watches for good and evil. And when someone looks me up and down, do you meet someone for the first time and they're like, up and down, you? I, I really struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I really do. And God knows that. And <laughs> there have been times where I just <laughs> decided that I wasn't going to be friends with someone because that was my very first thing. I was like, you can't do that. Do you know, you can't do that because that's not about you. You can't hold that against. I mean, it's like it's a look. I don't know, but I mean, it makes me feel like they think I'm better than them. Because then immediately I was in inferiority. And I needed, I needed God to sort that out because I, I wasn't inferior at that point. But the way I was on the inside, I was interpreting myself as being less. And that, and he was like, so these things, I don't like them. Not because the per of that the person loves them, but because the impact it has on the people they do it to. Because it's a two sided thing. Just because you're not the person with the lying tongue, <laughs> if you said you heard things people were saying about you and the rascality was exposed, but God has transformed you because there may have been a time where that would be like, okay, fine, well, I'm going to do this, see how they like that. Um, I was that person in high school, I was actually very good at it, being a kind of person, I can offer some interesting things to get people back. <laughs> Um, I did, but do you know what changed me from from being that? I can look at it and think, do you know what? God, I'm just so I look at myself 15, 20 years ago, and I think that 
If people saw me then, would they have expected me to be where I am now? Because the, I doubt that they would, because the only person who have changed me from that really not nice person who was reactive to all the things we put on, um, I'm not that person anymore. It's because God has been able to transform the inside where he gives you your value. It's about that whole value of who you are to him. Um, and so it is about maybe the people aren't aware that they've had their own time, that they've been so in discord, but you know, we have the power to be the change we want to see. God gives us that power um, that if we want to see change and stop something from going any further, it, it's with us. It's with me. If, someone, if I hear people talking about me, um, I kind of think now and I say to the girls, if you have to say that about me, I'm like, well, do you know, it's better to talk about you than someone else because we know how to deal with it. We know how to forgive and let it go. Rather let it be here than someone else who doesn't and then it gets wider and wider and wider because then they're hurt and they're hurting someone else. So it's a ripple effect. That's why God doesn't like these things. Because it's not, it doesn't, it's not just one instance, it's everything that comes out of that. If someone's mean to me, so I think that's okay, I'm going to be mean to me. Because if they can say that, I can say that, and then they go, well, I'm going to be And then it's just like everyone's been horrible and doing nasty things. It's that whole thing about revenge. We don't have the power to take revenge, it should be ours. God. God is the one who sees all things, and He is the one. Who weighs the balance? And he is the one we stand before whenever we get to heaven. You know, he's the one who is able to meet out what is right and what's wrong. And we don't have that power. You know, I'm not God and I'm a son or a daughter of God. I don't have that power. And God didn't say that I should do that. He said that I was to love my neighbor as I love myself. Jesus said. You've got to be transformed to love yourself, don't you? <laughs> Sometimes there's some questions you want to ask about what God is thinking of your lady. <laughs> I have some questions about that. But the thing is, is that, that that's what we're called to do. That's, and we have to be transformed by His love because we don't have it. Yeah. The sinful nature doesn't have it to love yourself so you can love someone else. We want to love ourselves so we can love ourselves. So we can do the transformation thing, you know, the, the wee eyebrow plucks and the <laughs> lip reflection and the whatever people do. That's what we want to do. But the thing is, we need, we need to be transformed so that the love we have is love that we want to share, that we have to share. Um, so then needs, he was like, okay, so. That stuff's going on, how do you deal with it? What are you going to talk to me about? And I said, well, I don't know, you know what it is. So, but I told you how to talk to me. It's like, I know, but it's like, okay, so let's just be, let's be serious. In Philippians, and this is my go to verse in life. Everyone knows this, Everyone knows me. Where's my phone? Because I've got, I've got where I want to read it from. <laughs> Um, Philippians 4 6. Um, I'm going to get the Passion version here. Because um, you just have to get it. Uh, and 6. Right? It says, Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about. A thing, be saturated in prayer throughout every day, offering your faithful requests before God, overflowing with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will <coughs> answers known to you through Jesus Christ. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honourable and admirable. Beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on the glorious work of God, praising Him always. Follow the example of all that we have imparted to you, and the God of peace will be with you in all things. So he's, he's quite broad in what, in what to do. Tell him about your life. <laughs> so, uh, you know, take your, tell him every detail of your life. 
that's still the irky things, the, you know, the things that you lose like, mm, seriously boring, what is going on there? Um, because it's something that I always feel with. Like when I'm noticing it somewhere else, it's probably more a reflection of what I need in my life. If it's irking me that someone else is doing it, then I need to look at me because there's something that it's rubbing against that God needs to sort out. It's catching on me and it shouldn't be. God has created me to be it made in his image and um, I need to speak to him about those things. And the Philippians, and I, I just love that, it's like don't be pulled in different directions and worried about things. It's keep focused. Yeah. Because you know what the problem is? The problem is up here. This bit here that people only know 10% about, um, that is the problem. Yeah. I know it is. That is because if we can, if this is where the transformation is going to happen, in here and then it will feed into our hearts because the mind we are born obviously into a sinful world we have a body it's not a spiritual glorified thing yet we are here we're organic the brain is the brain it is created people don't understand it so what god did was he told us how to how to use it and how to focus it to get best out of it I believe that's that's where the transformation comes in, is that you um, pray before, be saturated in prayer. Mm -hmm. That is conversation. That's not like the just close my eyes and speak to God three minutes. That is constant conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you know that is saturating your life in prayer? That is speaking to God. So when you're speaking to someone, you generally your focus is on them. Um, you know people when you're speaking to them and thinking about all other things. You can immediately tell. You can. Because it's one of my pet hates. It's like, can I just have you for three seconds? But you can see that they're focused on something else. God is telling us how to, to sort that out. That's, that's how we get our, our mind back on track. We get back to basics. It's like, okay, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Um, and put your thoughts... Keep the thoughts continually on authentic and real, honourable, admirable, beautiful, respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind things. Fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God. You just have to look at a tree to see that. Mm -hmm. How did that tree know that it should grow apples and not pears? Mm -hmm. So how did it know it should it, you know, why doesn't it grow apples, pears, oranges and lemons? That would save us the space in the garden if it did do all that. The one tree with everything that just through different fruit, fruit every season. That's not how it goes. Each one has a purpose. It can't be everything. It has to do what it has to do. And we have to do what we have to do. And if we're going to do what we have to do, we need to get this sorted. Yeah. I need to get it sorted. That's where tra transformation comes in. It's about that conversation. Because it didn't say just, you know, keep, your, keep reading the Bible. All the time he said, Keep, in, keep prayerful. Keep, um, keep speaking to me. Yes. Because that is, he reveals that, I mean, all this stuff is in the Bible, but it's in conversation with him. It's like, you so look at this, look at this. Because what, what happens then is that um, our mouths directly spit out what's in our hearts and what's in our heads. It does. It does, so, you know, you know from uh, language, I mean, I hear like all sorts of language, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that most hearts, just think that's not really where God wants us to be. Do you know where, what we're speaking, um, are we speaking his, what he's saying to us, or are we just actually holding things up in the transformation process to say the wrong things? I mean, think about it. Everything here. On this planet was spoken by a word. Words. That was it. It wasn't anything else. The only thing that was not created by words is you. We were created by his hand of the stuff his words made. So what your words are saying is directly going to show what's going on in your mind and what's going on in your heart. Is it reinforcing the work God's done or is it not? Where is the transformation really? Because we can look all transformed on the outside, we wear hats and nice clothes and look all beautiful. The minute someone speaks, you know if they're beautiful or not, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but 
it, you do. You see really beautiful people and then they start speaking and you just think, oh, please be quiet. <laughs> you just, you know, you're ruining that whole beautiful thing that God has given you. God has created this beautiful temple for the Holy Ghost and then you start speaking and it's, it's not nice. But you get that and God's like, that's it, I want you to be like that. It's not about what's on the inside, on the outside, it's not the inside, because the outside is going to get old, it's going to go grey, it's going to get wrinkles, it's just wear and tear, it's like gravity, you've been here 40 years, what do you expect? Um, your skin's been covering you for all these years, so it's going to happen, that is the process, I want that to happen. It's the inside. And you know, you, you know yourselves, words, words are a powerful thing. I just want to... Go to, let me check, I've got the right one here. Yeah, okay. So, thing is, we, we do have a sinful nature. Do you know? I like coffee and I love caffeine, but my body needs it. I'm not saying that's sinful, but I am a bit of a slave to it, I need it. Um, <laughs> so, the thing is, is that there's in Romans 7, from verse 14, there's quite a big description about sin and the trouble we have being sinful beings. So, it says in here, the Lord is, the law is good then, the trouble is not with the law, but with me, because I am sold and slave, slave of a sinner as my master. I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. I know perfectly well that what I'm doing is wrong, and my bad conscience shows that I agree that the law is good, that I can't help myself because sin is lying in it, so I do these things. But, if we scroll down to verse 25, it says, Thank God, the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So, you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. Jesus is the answer. And God said to me, no, Jesus didn't just... It wasn't just his body that hung on the cross. He's like, can't you think about the fact that there's mention made that all of Jesus' blood was poured out for you. Everything. Do you know what runs in blood? We have oxygen. We all need air, which is the thing that God breathed into us. So the blood carried all of that out of his body that was sacrificed, paid for the air that goes into our bodies. It also carries the white blood cells, which are our immune system. That, that's what fights, it fights infection. So that was paid. But what else is in there, which I thought was really, really interesting, is that we also, with my notes,
every job, job was required for the job to be done. The job was not complete without every job. But it was pure hormones, it was pure proteins, pure, pure, pure. So you have to, I think for me it was the realisation that actually it was paid. That has been paid. God paid that through his son Jesus to the law of death and sin and all that, the devil and the rights he'd taken to us. And not only that, it was so that we, who are not Jewish, or from that nation, are able to be adopted into that family mm -hmm. without any difference between us. Mm -hmm. And it's that transformation of knowing I belong to a family, I belong, I genuinely belong. I'm attached, I have this attachment, I'm secure, I trust my father. Um, it's like when you have children and you sit down and you have the conversations that are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But I've learned that just shouting at my at kids don't, doesn't work. My parents tried, you know, smacking us, they tried shouting at us, all that stuff. And as a child, I know that was like, it's just over. But you sit down with a child and you're like, okay, so how do you think that went? What you said there? <laughs> and and it, it's not nice, they don't like it. Because you know, we're free, God sets us free, and we're free to make choices. But we're not free of the consequences of our choices. We're not free from the consequences that come from what we say. The consequences are the consequences. We're free to say what we want to say. We are. But we're not free of the consequences. We are not. And that's where we're fortunate we have the blood of Jesus. Because we mess up. And we can repent. Part of transformation is knowing that we can repent. Repentance is a sincere, it's a sincere state of heart. I looked it up. Um, what have I able to find it? Um, but it's, it's a sincere, I wrote it somewhere. It's the sincerity of your state of heart when you're repenting. It's not, I have worked with children, which you know was quite amazing. I had a, a little lad who would be like, Sorry, and then slap the head of the person beside it. That was not repentance. That was not a repentant heart. That's not, you know, we don't say, well, I'm sorry, and then do the thing. That's not repentance. That's an insurance policy that we're trying to take out. It, that doesn't work. Huh? So it's just not supposed to say, it's repentance? Yes. I just said to the wrong thing. Yes, we're talking about repentance. You missed the whole own conversation, but that was okay because that was really for the girls. <laughs> the thing is, um, is that even through all that, with our repentance um, and having our trust of God and working those things out so that we can avoid, we can, we can step into our call. Because it's, it's, sometimes you wait and then suddenly, okay, let's do it. I'm like, are you sure? Now. I'm okay to wait a bit longer. Do you know, it, that there, you need all that stuff to be transformed so that you're like, okay, God, you've got this. You have me. I'm ready. You've done the work. I've read the word. I've spoken to you. I know the good things that you've done that you want me to focus on. It is, it is part of your being. Do you know that whole thing, second nature? You know when you're driving your car and you're suddenly home but you meant to go to the Fair Hill? Because it's second nature to go home. And you're like, how did I even get here? Um, we want that to be second nature. We want to have the, the things that God has put inside of you and you and you. That whole thing with the Holy Spirit, that it's transforming the inside of you so that you can do what He asks. Do you know, it took Moses 40 years of conversation with God. 40 years to go in and say that my people go. That was an easy conversation, I don't imagine. To walk in and say to the most powerful people in Egypt, even though you were adopted into the family, it's like, let people go. It's like, are you joking? They're building my sphinx over there. I'm not there, it'll go. Who's going to build that? Do you know, it's like, let's just be real. I would say that Ramesses is thinking, are you joking? It's <laughs> like, what about the stuff I need built? And I'd be like, the weakest pharaoh in Egypt. There's a whole ego thing, but what was it about? Love myself. It's about I love myself, not to love others. It wasn't a godly love, 
loving myself. He was not transformed. Mm -hmm. Moses was. Because he was there risking his life because, I mean, you know, he's going up there to the Pharaoh mm -hmm. saying that my people go, my house boy is going to do this, this, and this. He was putting his neck out there, mm -hmm. couldn't even speak properly. Um, so, you know, it's not really very much, there's not a worse thing than standing in front of people and speaking. Who knows this? You feel sick, you shake, stomach's going, you're like, okay, hey, don't. <laughs> and, and, and he couldn't speak properly. So, that was not a, a comfortable situation, but he did it because he was transformed. Had 40 years of conversation. 40 years. And I remember on the earth nearly 42, and I'm just thinking, imagine. I still have a long way to go here before I even stepped into what God wanted me to do. And that was with just conversation. It is. It just, there was no iPads, there was no working <laughs> 37 hours a week with paperwork. And, you know, there was none of that stuff. He, he could focus on that. So it has to be a choice that we make to focus on the Lord. And I'm going to get back to my notes because I'm going to get grace in there. Um, <laughs> so we are, I'm just going to look here, um, Romans 3, just want to check that this is my right. Yes, okay. Um, it says here, okay, it's just about God's faithfulness, even though we're in the past in a period of transformation. We don't know when we're going to get to where we're going to get to, but we're going to work to get there. Um, it's about those conversations. It's about staying honest, about telling him when you're having a, a down day. The thing is, he already knows. Isn't it? It's like your kids, my kids come in and shine like, what's about this stuff? Did you have a good day? It was fine. Are you okay? Fine. <laughs> Like the minute a girl says she's fine is when we start getting worried. We don't use the word fine unless someone needs to um, pay real attention. The word fine is like a it's like a warning sign. When I say the word I'm fine, you know I'm not. When I'm I'm fine, I'm not fine. Um, so there was the whole thing about being a Jew and Jewish circumcision, and for Jews there are many, um, many advantages, and they were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. Um, but it just, just to show about God's commitment to his people, because the same about the Jewish people, and they were really unfaithful, and you know, there were some who weren't, and kind of iffy on it, but it says true, some of them were unfaithful, but just because they broke their promises, does that mean that God will break his promises? Of course not. But everyone else in the world is a liar, God is true. Um, and it says, I love this, as the scripture says, he will be proved right in what he says, and he will win his case in court. Mm -hmm. Who's his case going to be in court? It's going to be me. I'm going to be his case. Because there's not any lawyer who's going to get me off anything except for him. There's no, there's, you know, he is faithful. There's, when he goes to court over you, he's going to win. Because he's faithful <laughs> to you. Yeah. That, his faithfulness is to you. And I like stuff like that because I like that whole legal system. Because, I mean, it takes time. You need to know who you are, what you do, what you say, what, 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 what. Because he has to stand up in the venue. I mean, how transformative is that? I just I want to be good when you go to court for me. <laughs> I want it to be a fabulous case, not like trying to fight out all the, the stuff that I did wrong. And okay, so we're we're nearly through. We are F, which is really about being free and forgiven. Who's free? I will I will give you the notes at home. So I'm just doing the lesson. So, freedom. <laughs> In Galatians 5, for everyone else, except my husband, who's being a rascal as usual, um, it says, So Christ has set us really, it says, So Christ has really set us free. Now make sure you stay free. Mm -hmm. Don't get tied up again into the slavery 
of the law. Don't get tied up again in those seven sins that God hates that people are going to do. Why does he hate them? Because people do them. He wouldn't have to hate them if it didn't happen. He hates it because it does happen. And so don't get tied up in that stuff. So if I'm used to this, he was on my cooking course before. He did deliver a whole thing about delivery of children in that that class. I nipped out for a whisk, I came up and there was a whole birthing class going on in my cookery <laughs> I was mortified. <laughs> Honestly, girl walked in to tell us that she was expecting, and he was like, I can tell you what's going to happen at the end. <laughs> so, what are you going for? Birth control, not birth control, birthing methods? It's like birth control didn't work at this stage. <laughs> and he's, yeah, about asking and everything, my cooking class. I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens to me. Let God connect you to those people because 
this wisdom comes from fathers and mothers. And there's some people who are just made to be fathers and mothers. It doesn't matter what age they are, they just seem to be a mommy or a daddy. They just have that, that gifting God has given them. Because they, they have stuff. They know. They've been the, the ones who've been in and the, they said that. They've, they've been that person. They've learned skills and how to deal with it. How to go to God. What scriptures help me? This helped me. This is the way that we get that transformation is, is bring others, learn from others. Wait to hear what Job said to his friends. So, Job 6, and I like, no, 16, sorry, my writing is really terrible. Um, and my notes are at home. So, so, these are the kind of things that Job needs to respond to. I've heard of words like that before. The comfort you give is only a torment. But you're going to keep taking forever. Do you always have to have the last word? If you were in my place and I am yours, I could see it and say everything you're saying. I could shake my head wisely and drown you in a flood of words. I could strengthen you with advice and keep, talk, keep talking to comfort you. I mean, I'd like to you know, you had a bit of a, a thing. It's like, you know, just, just stop. If I were in your place and he says what he would do, I can strengthen you with advice and keep talking to comfort you. He's completely different to them, isn't he? There's, there's, he has a transformation in his life because his life was not easy. He did not have a great time. If I were in your place, I could say everything you're saying. I could shake my head wisely and throw it in a flood of words. But he could strengthen you and he could comfort you. Maybe that's part of helping other people transform. Is thinking about how do I strengthen them? Because we're only ever as strong as the weakest link. We're, that's how strong we are. As, as a group, as any group, we're only as strong as the weakest link. Mm -hmm. And is it, our, is it our responsibility and our transformation to support someone else's transformation? It's my responsibility to support my children's transformation, my husband's transformation, my friends, and my church in the body of Christ, that is my responsibility to help them with that because I could be one of Job's friends who do you know they weren't very helpful, will we just say. Um, but when he responded to them it was like, but if I were in your place, I could use wisdom, I could strengthen you and I would comfort you. You know, there's a different approach. <clears throat> it's up to you what you choose, not up to me, it's entirely up to you. But in transformation, in the tough times, Remember in Romans 8, 38, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. So the dark moments when we're in a slump, in a heap, we fell apart, he helps us to get up. Because transformation happens when you've fallen in that slump, you've fallen in a heap, you're able to get up. Because it's not your physical body getting up, it's your transformed body getting up. It's your inside getting up. That background of seal is not is not flesh, mm -hmm. it's spirit. That thing that gets you up and keeps you going, it's your spirit. So you can rest in that. Rest in the knowledge that even though you fall, you will arise. He doesn't say you might arise, but think about arising. Maybe you'll arise. I don't know if it's possible. When you fall, maybe that's just dead. No, that's not it. When you fall, you will arise. It's not even, it's not even like a long sentence, it's just like a fact. Just like, yeah. you will arise. So we can rest. And then the final part that I'll talk, just share about in um, transformation is meditating on the word. We're having the conversation with God, then it's word always, always comes back to show us that it's right. To the way that I would use it in early years is to consolidate that learning, that learning that he's giving you. You see it and you're like, because then he's using all of our senses. Who remembers when you used to know your phone number off by heart? I can tell you anyone's phone number now. I can still tell you my phone number from when I was a little girl. I can still tell you my phone number from my uncle who lived in Zimbabwe. Couldn't tell you anyone's phone number now. No one. Do you know why? Don't use our senses, do we? 
You don't need your sight and your touch. That's why this is important. And as much as you entirely have your smartphone, this is important because we are sensory beings. Um, meditate, hold it, feel it. Your senses are taking in so much, your subconscious takes in so much. You need your book. You need your pens. You need that stuff because that's how we remember. You know, I, I fully believe that the whole smartphone thing and everything is just actually dulling our ability to, <laughs> to process stuff more than, than ever before. And so with the Bible, you need, I, I keep it in my bag now all the time. I need to feel it, I need to see it, I need to touch it. I need a bigger one because the form is really small and I'm <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know that anyone's going to ever fully control. This is the most dangerous thing on the earth. You can control the wild horse, people learn to tame those things. No one has it. That is only by the power of God inside of us. And that causes a lot of problems in our transformation. We need to speak to God, think of the good things. Because what's in our minds will come out of our mouths. It will. So, thank you very much. I hope everyone's transformed.